أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. We seek the protection of God from Shaytan who has been expelled from God's kingdom of special grace and mercy. If we avoid the satanic habit of arrogance, whatever we know to be true by the guidance of the God-given intellect, the divine revelation, the human conscience, we submit to that truth. And if we avoid the satanic habit of defiance, whatever we know to be wrong and <coughs> false, by the guidance of the God-given intellect, the divine revelation, and the human conscience, we don't commit that evil. And if we have reliance on God and take strength from Him, we shall be enlightened to detect what is satanic and what is divine and good in our thoughts and our feelings. And we shall also get the strength to be able to say no to evil and to say yes to what is virtuous and good. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We humbly seek the grace and guidance from God because He is Allah, the all perfect being. Nobody can achieve any perfection until and unless Allah wills it so. And we ask for His grace and guidance because He is Rahman. His Rahman, His mercy, His love, His grace is overflowing. It reaches out to each and every entity, brings it to life, sustains it, and enables it to reach its goal of creation. And we ask for His grace and guidance because He is Rahim. His extra, abundant, continuous, supportive, rewarding love and mercy is available but not for all. Only for those amongst us, the voluntary beings, who respond to His call, who submit to His call, who believe in His plan for creation. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad We send our salutations and greetings on the Holy Prophet, on his Holy Project. They were the best chosen servants of God from the beginning of creation till the end. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from amongst the whole of the creation, yeah. all the prophets was the closest to God, understood God the best manner possible for any human being. He knew who God was, what his plans are, what are his beautiful names, and what his role is, and how is he to perform his task to guide mankind. And we send our salutations on his holy progeny, who are the next best after him. Respected elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. As we assemble to commemorate the tragedy of Karbala, tonight, the eve of Friday, Thursday, is a special day as far as the remembrance of Imam Hussain is concerned. Throughout the year, there are certain dates on which it is recommended to go for ziyarah. Ziyarah of Ashura, Ziyarah of Arba'een, Ziyarah in the month of Rajab, in the month of Sha'ban, in Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr, Eid al-Fitr, Arafah. But throughout the year, there's one day also every week which is specific for Ziyarah, and that is Thursday. On my first uh, trip to Karbala, uh, Najaf, sorry. Uh, the plan was to go to Karbala later on, so the Thursday we were in Najaf. And my plan was to proceed to Karbala later on. But I wanted to meet some uh, ulama on Thursday night if possible. So I shared my plans with one of the uh, senior students who was studying there. And he told me, uh, Sheikh, <laughs> Thursday night you want to be here? Thursday night Najaf is empty. Everybody is gone. Everybody is in Karbala. You want to go for ziyarah of Imam Ali Imam is not here. He is in Karbala. Thursday is unique. The riwayat that say 
if you go for Ziyara or Ashura or Arba'in or Rajab, there is so much thawab. But if you compare the thawab promised for Ziyara on the eve of Friday, Thursday night, it surpasses all. So Thursday night is unique. Inshallah, we shall be reciting uh, Ziyara of Warith. But tonight we'll be commemorating uh, Hazrat Ali Akbar. It's amazing, in the ziyarat which have been reported from the Imams there's special mention of Ali Akbar separately. So, Ziyarat Ashura, for example. The whole ziyarat is about Imam Hussain, but towards the end, As-Salamu ala Hussain, wa ala Ali ibn al-Hussain, wa ala awlad al-Hussain, wa ala ashab al-Hussain. Yes, Imam Hussain had several awlad, but amongst the awlad, Ali Akbar is separate. He's mentioned specifically. Ziyarat al Once we finish the ziyarat of Imam alayhi salam, we address Ali Akbar. As-salamu ala ibn Rasulullah, shaheed ibn shaheed, mazloom ibn mazloom. Or the most detailed reference I have seen in the different ziyarat is in the ziyarat for the month of Rajab, for the first of Rajab, middle of Rajab, Sha'ban, first of Sha'ban, middle of Sha'ban. In that ziyarah, once we finish uh, addressing Imam salam, now is the turn to address Ali Akbar. Sheikh <coughs> Mufid, Sayyid al Ba'us, and other scholars who have reported the ziyarat, Majlisi Ali Rahman, in Bihar al Anwar reports Assalamu alaykum, Ayyuha Siddiq, Al Tayyib, Al Zaki, Al Habib, Al Muqarrab. Beautiful qualities mentioned about Ali Akbar He is the most truthful. He is the pure. He is the purified. He is the beloved. He is the one who is close to God. Ibn Rayhanati Rasulillah. He is the son of the beloved of the Prophet. Assalamu alaikum in shaheed in muhtasib. Salam be on you, O oh, the shaheed who gave up his life seeking nothing but the reward from God. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then the ziyarah continues. Ma akrama maqamak wa ashrafa mun qalabak. What a high honorable status you occupy, O oh, Ali Akbar. Ashhadu laqad shakarallahu sa'yaka wa ajzala thawabak. I testify that God has rewarded you for your utmost effort and sacrifice that you did. Allah has granted you the highest honor for the sacrifice that you did. This reward after Shahada has been preceded by the honor that you have been granted to become a member of the Ahlul Bayt who have been purified by God Himself. This Ziyara is referring to what Imam Hussain on the day of Ashura when <coughs> Ali Akbar comes to seek permission to go to the battlefield. Strange, I haven't noticed this for other shuhada, but for Ali Akbar he recites an ayah of the Quran. Oh Allah, this is the best person who resembles the Prophet. That's a hadith. But there's an ayah, Inna Allah astafa. Adama, wa Nuhan, wa ala Ibrahim, wa ala Imran, ala al-alameen. Allah, in His wisdom from the whole of mankind, has chosen some people. These are the messengers. Adam, and Nuh, and Ibrahim, and ala Ibrahim, and Imran, and ala Imran. Imran referring to Ya'qub alayhi salam. Ali Imran, many Israel. Adam alayhi salam, the first man on the earth, chosen by God to be the guide for mankind. And, and notice that Adam alayhi salam was 
superior to the angels, and therefore the angels were asked to make sajda. And the Akbar belongs to that tribe of the selected representatives of God. And Allah also chose Nuh alayhi Nuh, after the flood, when the majority of mankind had, those who had rejected the truth, had perished in the punishment, Nuh alayhi is known to be the second Adam, who now begins a new generation. Ali Akbar belongs to that tribe of those selected messengers. Wa'ala Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi is the father of all the monotheistic religions. Ala Ibrahim, that means Ismail, Ishaq, Ya'qub, and two, three generations after Ya'qub, Musa, Harun. Wa Ala Imran, Ala Imran referring to the Bani Israel messengers from Musa till Isa alayhi salam, including Dawood and Sulaiman and Zakaria and Yahya and the other messengers. Ali Akbar belongs to this tribe of the righteous holy people. Imam is reciting this ayah when Ali Akbar goes to the battlefield. And Allah has Istafa. Istafa is to make Safa. Safa is somebody who is pure. That means there is no uh, impurity, no adulteration, either in his actions or in his beliefs. Istafa. He has been purified and selected from amongst the whole of mankind. No, not only amongst the whole of mankind, but also amongst, from amongst the jinn and from amongst the angels also. And the Akbar status is not an ordinary status. And hence all this importance in the ziyara which is given to him specifically. And then Imam alayhi salam says, ذُرِّيَّةً, the next ayah, Surah Ali Imran, ayah 34. ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضٍ <coughs> These are descendants, one from another. Oh, there's a continuity right from the beginning, one from the other. Adam to Nuh to Ibrahim to Musa to Isa to the Holy Prophet through Ismail. ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضٍ And that's why we say in Ziyarat Iwarith, this whole continuous chain of pure ancestry. Ashadu annaka kunta nooran fil aslaab shamikha. This is a tafsir of this ayah of Surah Al Imran. Lam tunajiska al jahiliya to the antijasiha, wa lam tulbiska min mudilahim ma tithiya biha. You were not tainted and adulterated by the pollution of shirk and disobedience and rejection and rebellion that was prevalent in the societies. You are pure and purified. How so? How did you manage to achieve this? Wallahu sami'un alim. God is all hearing and God is all knowing. He's all hearing. That means each one of us has a cry that we make, a aspiration, a prayer, a goal that we have. Will we achieve it or not? For God is on hearing. Why should we not achieve it? Not only God is on hearing, but God is on responding. Samir has two meanings. One is to listen, and one is to respond. If you talk to me and I don't pay attention, that means I'm not listening. Or no, I've heard you, but I don't answer you. I'm not paying it, I'm not listening. Not only God listens, but he responds, and therefore he selects them. Samir, Alim, but he knows whose prayers and whose efforts are sincere and genuine and authentic, and therefore deserve to be responded to and granted. And therefore allow me to elaborate on this status of Ali Akbar and how it applies to us uh, today. Oh, incidentally, this ayah is a very important ayah. It, 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 demonstrates the status of the Ahlul Bayt salam because they belong they are the chosen ones and they belong to Ali Ibrahim who have been selected. In the Shia tafsir of the Quran and in the Sunni tafsir also it is mentioned that in Allah Stafa Adama wa Nuhan wa Ala Ibrahima wa Ala Imrana 
wa ala Muhammadin ala al-alamin. That's the tafsir. Between ala Ibrahim and ala Ibran is ala Muhammad who belong to the progeny of Ibrahim through Ismail alayhi salam. In fact, the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt have elaborated even further. This is a very brief tafsir in the Sunni books. Tafsir Ta'alami has mentioned this. In the Shia tafsir, the sixth old Imam elaborates, he says, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has demonstrated the status of Ali alayhi salam not only in Ghadir form, which unfortunately was dismissed and ignored, but also in Mashrabat Umm Ibrahim. Mashrabat Umm Ibrahim was a place where Maria Qittiya was settled. And the Prophet on one occasion became sick and he was being nursed there. So some companions came to visit him when he was sick. So on that occasion, Ali salam also came to visit, but the place was small, the companions had congested the place, and there was no place for Ali salam to get close to the Prophet. So when the Prophet saw this, he said that, uh, Ya ma'ashar al-nas, afriju li Ali, open up please the space for Ali to come closer. And then just like in Ghadir al-Khum, on this occasion also, he caught his hand and brought him and made him sit near him. And he said, Ya ma'ashar al-nas, ha'ula ahlu bayti, tastakhifuna bihi wa ana hayu al-bayna al-buhranaykum. You seem to be ignoring their status, though I'm still alive. Amawallahi, la in ghibtu ankum fa inna Allah la yaghibu ankum. Yes, there will come a time when I will die and I'll be absent. Physically, I won't be present. But God is never absent. He's going to watch how you are going to react to His message regarding the status of the Ahmad Bayt. And let me tell you, it's good for you if you accept. These are divinely appointed representatives. It's good for you. It's your happiness, it's your bliss, it's your progress, it's your prosperity if you accept the righteous leader, godly appointed leader to be your commander. وَسَلَّمَ لَهُ وَلِلْأَصْيَاءِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ حَقًّا وَلَوْ أُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ فِي شَفَاعَةِ لِأَنَّهُمْ أَتْبَاعِي On the day of judgment, nobody can escape Jahannam until and unless they receive my shafa'ah. And one guarantor of my shafa'ah is for you to accept the status of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhum as-salam. Just like Ibrahim. Ibrahim, in Surah Ibrahim, Allah quotes him to say that فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي Whosoever follows me, he is minni, he is from me. So also the Prophet says, Whosoever follows me, in the matter of the Ahlul Bayt he is minni, and therefore will deserve to get the grace and mercy. But what Ibrahim said, yes, he has his honor, but Ibrahim in relation to the Prophet, is lower, the Prophet is higher than Ibrahim And incidentally, this status of the Ahlul Bayt that, that God has selected Adam and Nuh and Ibrahim and Ali Ibrahim and Ali Imran, this status will be clarified and declared and reminded to the people once again at the end, end times when the holy awaited Savior shall make his appearance and will challenge and remind people. Whoever claims that he is following Adam, I am the closest to Adam. Whoever claims he is following Noah, I am the closest to Noah. Whoever claims he is following Ibrahim, or Musa, or Isa, I am the closest. And then he will recite this ayah. فَأَنَا بَقِيَّةُ مِنْ آدَمْ وَذَخِيرَةُ مِنْ نُوحُ وَمُصْطَفَى مِنْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَصَفْوَةُ مِنْ مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم
So Ali Akbar occupies a unique status from amongst the children of Imam Ali Salam based on this declaration of Imam in Karbala. Question, what is it that enabled Ali Akbar to manage to reach such a high status that he was Isfahar, he was then selected? You know, uh, critics who examine the past when the role of the brave men in defending the cause of truth was more prominent. And nowadays we find that, unfortunately, that zeal and enthusiasm and aspiration and training is, is weakened. They, they say, well, there's one uh, author, uh, Blankenhorn, David Blankenhorn, who's written a book, Fatherless America, the problem of families breaking down, single mothers bringing up children without the presence of the father. He makes an interesting statement. He says, the most urgent domestic challenge facing the United States at the close of the 20th century, the challenge is to recreate fatherhood as a vital social role for men. Men have become so divorced from their social responsibility and family responsibility. They are concerned about themselves. They are concerned about taking care of a woman as the wife, taking care of children, the patience, the perseverance, the determination, the hard work, the sincerity, the commitment that is required is missing. Boys are being trained to come up not to be responsible men, family men, unfortunately. So these social critics or social reformers are calling for the reintroduction of the role of the father. Another social reformer says, experience has shown us that men who are the happiest in life and the most content in their masculine role today are those men whose fathers invested time and energy in the lives of their sons. Missing fathers, absent fathers, irresponsible fathers, selfish fathers. So one of the first things we learned is that definitely Imam Hussain was playing a direct role in the bringing up of this son. One uh, Scientist says, uh, I was studying the life of the, one of the serial killers. If you looked at his background, very innocent. I went and met his father. His father was showing me uh, the picture of the boy, young, bubbly, charming, happy. No problems at all when he was young. But something somewhere went wrong. The father later on, he writes a biography and this scientist says, when I studied the biography, I discovered one thing. The father turned out to be too busy in his own life to be able to give time at home. The boy was missing the presence, the attention, the involvement, the engagement, the affirmation, the support from the father. He began to drift. And unfortunately, when he drifted, well, many other drift, but it depends now in which circles you enter. He entered into the world of isolation, of fantasy, of crime. And the heinous crimes that he committed. He was a serial killer who chopped up bodies. But one of the principal contributory causes, the missing role of the father. Father didn't realize he wasn't an evil father. He was an absent father. So basically a boy especially is looking for answers to questions from his father. Who should be a man? What should he believe in? How should he behave? Uh, what should he try to aspire and achieve in life? What should be his responsibilities? In the Riwayat, in uh, response to this question, I would like to share this beautiful hadith recorded by Imam Hussain <laughs> Islam reports that the Holy Prophet <laughs> So if Ali Akbar was 
أشبه الناس برسول الله خلقا وخلقا ومنطقا that he was the most resembling to the Prophet in his appearance, in his character, in his speech. One way to understand that is look at this hadith that is reported from the Prophet by Imam Hussein and definitely would have been used to train Ali Akbar. In Allah khalaq al-aqla min nurin makhzoonin maknoonin fi sabiq al-aidni. Allah created this beautiful, precious gem in the human being, the aql. But it is created from the highest wisdom of God. Aql is a reflection of divine wisdom. And لم يطلع عليه نبي مرسل ولا ملك مقرب. The highest degree of aql, no angel, in fact, no messenger also could fathom it. The Holy Prophet was the living embodiment of that highest divine wisdom, which no angel and no messenger could fathom. And uh, Imam says, The nafs of the aql was ilm, wal fahma ruhahu, understanding was the spirit of the aql. Was zuhda raqsahu, the head. If you were, if you were to imagine aql is personified as a person. The head of aql is zuhd and simplicity. <laughs> a person who is greedy has no aql, in other words. A person whose simplicity has attained <coughs> divine and actualized <coughs> divine wisdom in himself. Well, haya aynay, the personified aql, its eyes are haya, decency, modesty, a sense of self-respect. The tongue of this personified aql is hikmah and wisdom. The words that he speaks are full of wisdom and understanding. And his mouth is gentleness. And his heart is compassion. And then Allah, once he created this Beautiful creation, then he orders Aqbil fa aqbil, adbir fa adbar. Come forth, and the aql obeys. Go back, and the aql obeys. Anyone, therefore, who does not obey God's command to do the wajib or restrain himself from haram doesn't have the true aql of the divine wisdom. He's got some satanic <coughs> power of thinking. And then Allah addresses the aql. Now speak up. And aql speaks up. It says, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the one who is not a kufu. Praise be to God who has no partner and no peer and no equal and no partner. And then Allah is so happy with this beautiful creation. Responsive, obedient, submissive, wise compassionate creation which is reflecting divine beauty. Now Allah addresses this aql. He says, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي مَا خَلَقْتُ خَلْقًا أَحْسَنَ مِنْكَ I swear by my majesty, there's no creation better than you. And بِكَ أُعَخِذْ وَبِكَ أُعْقِي And if I am going to reward or punish, it is because of you. A person loses his aql, mentally debilitated, mentally ill, won't be accountable. <coughs> Through you, aql, I will reward or punish. It's through you that I will be feared, I will be hoped in. Aql is the one that attracts us to God and makes us hope in him and him alone. Aql is the one that makes us fear him and him alone and nothing else in front of him, however big its physical or material threat it may be. If this is the training and the understanding that is in the Prophet through Imam, through Imam Ali and through Imam Hussein, it would have come in Ali Akbar also. And therefore, uh, I was asking one of the uh, children here, and they told me one uh, one of the sites that you can visit here is is a castle. 
This reminded me, you know, back in uh, European history, the castle was uh, the home of the uh, that famous uh, uh, godly uh, warrior, the gallant horseman, the knight. And if you look at the history of the knight, it resembles what training uh, the Islamic hadith also tells us. The knight is a man who's got chivalry. He's a real man, he's a gentleman. Um, a, a man who is a warrior, a soldier, a horseman, a protector, a champion of uh, what is good and the divine cause. They say, you know how a knight is trained? He's got three stages of training. When the boy is about seven or eight years of age, he becomes a page, and then a squire at 14, and then a knight at 21. Mm -hmm. When he's a page at seven to eight years of age, he is taken away from his mother's care, and is sent to live in a castle under a, an overlord or a relative. There the page learns about armor and weapons and falconry and the rudiments of knighthood. I'm talking about medieval times, but the principle is important. And then, of course, he has to perform household tasks, for example, for the queen of the castle. Between age 14 to 21, the page becomes a squire. Now he attaches himself to the knight. He travels with him everywhere in his company. He serves him in the basic tasks. He carries the knight's lance. He wakes him up in the morning, even helps him to dress, for example. He competes in tournaments, archery, for example, to perfect his page uh, learning skills. And he undergoes a strict, rigorous discipline of training. 7 to 14. 14 to 21. Now he becomes eligible for knighthood. And there's an initiation process, there's a night long vigil, there's a ceremonial bath, and then he has to make a pledge to uphold the code of honor of a knight. Um, 21 years of age. What is the age of Adi Akbar? Some revise at 18, some revise at 20. Don't be surprised, therefore, this whole stages of development and training from Imam Hussain must have been undertaken. Yes, all knights weren't good, some were evil, but the important thing is this, the philosopher Will Durant, in the history of philosophy, he says that one of the major achievements of the human spirit was the training of the knight. It, 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 it's a reflection of the beauty, the courage, the wisdom, the gentleness, the compassion, the determination of a human being in the form of this holy warrior, this gallant soldier, this champion and defender of women, for example, uh, as was famous amongst the knights. But, as some reformers and critics say, we are facing a problem where there's a crisis in fatherhood, and Adam Bloom, uh, he, he, he wrote a book, uh, closing of the American mind. In the American mind, he, he laments, even in the universities, unfortunately, they're no longer studying the wisdom that we have inherited from the past Western traditions. And he says, unfortunately, in our times, men, fathers and mothers have lost the idea that the highest aspiration they might have for their children is for their children to be wise wise as the prophets were and the priests were and the philosophers. In, instead, mothers and fathers are concentrating on getting their child to be comp competitive in education, get some degrees and, and, and pursue uh, material success. Um, it's interesting, uh, there is a detailed discussion that goes on between one person who comes and asks Imam salam certain questions. Imam doesn't answer. Imam asks Hassan, why don't you answer him? And then Imam asks Hussein, why don't you answer him? Well, there's a list of about 10 or more than 10 questions. And then towards the end, Imam Ali salam says, Shuraih, Hani, see this wisdom that you heard from my sons? This is the wisdom that you should teach your sons. So there were questions he asked 
what is aql and what is uh, a firm character in life, what is honor in life, what is magnanimity in life, what is stinginess, what is ignorance, who, is, who can be a chief and a leader, what is richness, what is poverty. And these are basic fundamental ideals on which a successful life, a godly successful life can be based. Unfortunately, everything now is being determined on material uh, success. Um, so the important thing I wanted to share with you is if we are seeing right now in society that crimes are being committed mostly by males, and more than 90% of prisons in the United States, the prisoners are males. Convicted felons, violent felons are men more than 90%. The lifetime chance of a man to go to prison versus the lifetime chance of a woman to go to prison. For a woman, is about 2%. For a man, it's 11%, five times more. So these reformers are saying that something has gone wrong in the training of these boys. How come they're turning out to be violent and criminal when they grow up? Margaret Mead, she, she's an anthropologist. She studied cultures and civilizations in different parts of the world, ancient civilizations and modern civilizations. Towards the end of, of her life, she made an interesting concludes, concluding remark. She says, the central problem of every society is to be able to define an appropriate role for the man. What we see society failing is when men have not been given the right training, the right vision, the right ideals, the right character that they should develop, the right discipline. In, in this hadith, I did not quote one important part of the hadith. I would like to quote it because it summarizes these ideals which Imam Hussein السلام, must have developed in Ali Akbar. Once the aql was created, then his aql was given 10 virtuous ideals. Ten ideals. Let's examine these ten ideals very briefly. Iman, Iman Imam Hussein Ali Salam quotes from his father Imam Ali Ali Salam, and he quotes it from the Prophet that true Iman is when not only you speak the true faith, but also what you believe and submit to in your heart, and also what you do by your limbs and your actions. That's the true Iman. Ali Akbar would have had that if he is the best and most resembling the Holy Prophet. Um, ikhlas and uh, sakina and sidq, uh, truthfulness, rifq. In the uh, riwayah, Imam Ali Salam praises rifq. Rifq is to be uh, gentle and to be kind. Imam Alayhi praises that the quality of rifq is desirable in a, in a youth and therefore would have been there in uh, Ali Akbar. He says, Ar-rifqu lubbun Man ahjama an ra'i wa ayyat bihi al-hiyal kan ar-rifq miftaha Sometimes you face problems in life. You're dealing with people stubborn unresponsive, difficult to deal with. The key to unlock this deadlock, this problem is rifq, gentleness, kindness, compassion. Win them over. <coughs> There's something in them that is blocking them. It is the love and compassion that they open up. Atiyyah, to be giving, to be sharing. Um, again, the riwayah from Imam Hussain reported in our hadith books that if you share, that is richness. If you share and give, that is mahabba. Because by giving, you win hearts. 
by giving and sharing, you're raising the uh, income level or prosperity level in the community. Interesting. One of the qualities of the apple is contentment. Look at modern life when there is no contentment. Look at the stress that we undergo. Imam Ali Salam says, Al Qunu'u Al Qana'atu Rahatu Al Abdan. You want Raha, peace, tranquility, calmness, there must be Qana'a. Otherwise, you're stressed. And now, modern, modern, uh, modern day medicine will say there's a whole list of medical problems that you can suffer because of stress. You can become fat because you're stressed. Stress, stressed out people are, tend to eat 40% more than normal people. You can have heart attacks or stress increases the heart rate and constricts the blood vessels. You can ruin your teeth. They say, you know, there's stress <laughs> hormones and uh, uh, poor oral hygiene and you grind your teeth. And you can uh, exacerbate the uh, appearance of certain diseases, be it cancer, be it uh, mental illness, especially those who are prone to develop. It even affects, they say, your immunity, and therefore you're more prone to uh, infections. And it speeds up the aging process. The university researchers found that the telomeres in the genes, in the chromosomes, they are affected because of stress, they're shortened. And because of that, the cells don't grow as quickly. And as a result, there's early appearance of wrinkles in the skin, and there's weakening of the muscles, and there's eyesight uh, becoming poor. Stress is medically harmful. Imam Ali Salam says, Al Qana'atu Raha, Raha to Abdan. And the list is long. But the important thing is we need to uh, learn the most important lesson from Ali Akbar is that. <coughs> he was an uh, aspiring, eager, enthusiastic, responsive, submissive, submissive to the higher wisdom, youth, who received the best, best possible <coughs> wisdom, which comes from Adam to Nuh to Ibrahim, down to the last prophet, down to Imam Ali and Imam Hussein Ali Salam. And therefore you notice his role in Karbala. He uh, he was the first one amongst all the Bani Hashim to voluntarily go. Not that Imam Hussain tells him, Ali Akbar, you have to be the first one to go. No, Ali comes to ask for permission. And unlike all the other Bani Hashim where Imam may hesitate to respond, in case of Ali Akbar, فَاسْتَأَذَنَا He sought permission فَأَذِنَ لَهُ Imam Ali Salam immediately grants him that permission. Question, what is so great about Ali Akbar that he is so willing to be the first one? We get a glimpse from a dream that Imam Ali Salam, or a vision that Imam Ali Salam sees when they're on their way from Makkah to Kufa and then they're diverted to Karbala in a place known as Ta'labiya. Imam has a vision. <coughs> he wakes up crying and inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon so Ali Akbar asks, how come, what's wrong? How come you're grieving and mourning? And Imam Ali Salam explains, I heard a voice, and it was telling me, Ya Hussein, innakum tisra'oon al masir You seem to be moving towards a destination, but actually you're moving towards your death. So Ali Akbar says, Ya Abati, afalasna ala al haq so we are going to ultimately die in this confrontation. But the most important thing is, should we be afraid of death? Are we not on the right path? And then Imam Ali Salam says, Bala ya bunayya, I swear by the one to whom we all will ultimately return. We are on the right path. And that is why we are going to refuse to obey and surrender to evil and therefore we will have to face the consequences and death will be the result. If Hussein is Warif, Adam and Nuh and Ibrahim, Ibrahim also saw a dream. 
And the son of Ibrahim also was tested in the same way that Ali Akbar was tested. My dear son, I saw a dream. Inni arafil manami anni azbahuk. I am slaughtering you, my son Ismail. I saw that in a dream. And the response, and this is mentioned in Surah Safa. And the response of Ismail to his father is, Ya Abati, my dear father, <laughs> I'm a young boy. You're, you're an elderly man now. Ibrahim was in his 90s. Ismail had just become Baliyah. Old man, I think uh, you're having some uh, satanic dreams. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you saw in a dream that you're slaughtering me. What sort of a dream is that? Uh, 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 excuse me, who says a dream is a command? Uh, and excuse me, who says a command has to be done now? Uh, maybe we should do it uh, later, after some years. Well, why now? Uh, excuse me, uh, my dear honorable father. Um, it was a dream, please ignore it. The Quran doesn't say any of these responses. The Quran says the son tells the father, Ya Abati, if alma tu'mar. My dear father, whatever was the command given to you, carry out and execute. Satajiduni insha'Allah min as sabirin You will find me amongst those who will comply. It's difficult. But I am determined, I will recognize what's the truth, I am determined to accept the suffering. Similar, Warith of, warith of Ibrahim and Warith of Ismail Ali Akbar gave the same answer in, in Ashura on that day. He asked for permission, Imam Ali Salam grants the permission. But then he does declare to the people, this young man who is coming, unlike anybody else, he is the most resembling to the Prophet in his character, in his appearance, in his words. And shame upon you, therefore, who claim to be the followers of the Ummah of the Prophet, and you want to kill somebody who looks like the Prophet? Shame upon you, Allahumma. Ishhad ala ha'ula. Oh Lord, you be the witness. Allahumma mna'ahum barakatil ard. Oh Allah, block your special blessings from coming to these rebellious, heedless, satanic, devilish uh, people. فَإِنَّهُمْ دَعَوْنَا لِيَنْصُرُونَ These are the ones, or well, some of them, they wrote letters to us in thousands, come over, they promised to help us. ثُمَّ عَدَوْ عَلَيْنَا يُقَاتِلُونَ Now they've come in an army against us to kill us. And then Imam Husayn shouts loudly because Umar ibn Sa'ad is right at the back. And he calls Umar ibn Sa'ad, مَا لَكَ قَطَعَ اللَّهَ رَحِمَكَ what is your problem? How come you give such a command? My son is now coming to the battlefield, not an ordinary son. If you are going to give the command that my son should be killed, remember God's retaliation is your son will also be killed in the future. Omar al Sad, don't you fear for your own son? But who is there to listen? But Imam Ali Salam had to speak the truth, at least some of the army members could realize. Ali Akbar comes to the battlefield. Ana Ali ibn Hussein ibn Ali. This is the training. He has his his flesh and blood has grown up through the teachings of Ali from the Prophet sallallahu And therefore he proudly he he, he honors Ali. Ana Ali ibn Hussein ibn Ali. Nahnu wa baytillah awla bin Nabi. Shabath and Shimr claim to have some relation with Layla, that she also somehow belonged to the tribe of Abu Sufyan. Come over, you are part of us, you are our relative through your mother, we'll give you protection. He responds to them. He says, Shabbat and Shimr and the other illegitimate ruler who is there in Kufa or in Sham, they are not deserving leaders. Therefore, I will never ever bow down and surrender to them. 
طَوْمَ غُلَامٍ هَاشِمِيٍّ عَلَوِي In fact, with all the force that I've been given, I will strike at you with this sword. The sword which will defend my father. The sword of a young man of Bani Hashim. You will see the gallantry and the chivalry and the courage and the bravery of Bani Hashim today. And being a young man well trained by Abu Abdullah Hussein, this was the flesh and blood of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And so there was an intense fight. But remember, he is the flesh and blood of Hussein. Therefore, he is also going to be targeted the most. He comes back briefly, it is said. He says, Ya Abati, al atash I'm fighting severely. I'm sweating. I'm losing water. I need more water. I'm thirsty. Thiklul hadid ajhadin. I'm asking for water not because I want to enjoy the pleasure of drinking. No, I want water to get more strength so I can fight better and defend you better, my dear father. Imam alayhi salam says, my dear son, يَعِزُّ عَلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلِيٍّ وَعَلِيكَ أَنْ تَدْعُوهُمْ فَلَا يُجِبُونَكَ Ali, you are making a request from me that I cannot grant you. I don't have anything. If you, if you can just touch my tongue, you see it is the driest of all. Ali, let me, let me tell you something. Why don't you take this ring of mine? Put this ring in your mouth. Maybe the ring will stimulate some flow of saliva. Ali, go back. Go and fight. But be assured that very soon before sunset, you shall meet your grandfather. <coughs> and he shall quench your thirst. Because he and after you drink from that chalice and goblet of kawthar, after that you will never ever go thirsty. Ali Akbar goes back and again issues a battle cry. وَاللَّهِ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ لَا نُفَارِقُ جُمُوعَكُمْ أَوْ تَغَمَّدَ الْبَوَارِقُ We will never ever be deterred. We will fight and this sword is going to shine like a brilliant, swerving and killing sword. And it doesn't matter how many of you come against me, I am bravely going to defend my father. It is said that one man, Munqidh bin Murrah al-Abdi, said, no, to, to counter this young man, we have to ambush him. And therefore, he comes from behind and he strikes a deadly blow on Ali Akbar on his head. And once that happens, now the rest of the army begin to attack him because now Ali Akbar has lost the power to continue to fight. <laughs> and the people started now attacking his holy flesh with their swords. Ali Akbar then falls on the horse. And unfortunately, the horse leads him even deeper and deeper into the enemy camp. <coughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the enemy can then begins to strike at him with their spears, with their swords, and they literally chop up his body. This is this is Warith Adam. It is said in the hadith that Adam السلام, when he asked Qabil, where is where is my other son Habil? And Qabil had already killed Habil and in the process of killing has smashed his head. When Adam السلام, ultimately finds the, the body of Habil with a crashed head, Adam السلام, weeps intensely. Imagine the warith of Adam in Karbala when he comes to see the body of his Habil, his son Ali Akbar, not only with a crushed head, not only with a crushed chest, but with the whole body chopped up in the middle of the enemy's camp. Ali Akbar was now about to die. The soul is about to leave the body. He cries out, Ya Abata! 
هذا جدي رسول الله as you promised me that at the time of death I shall visit my grandfather I see my grandfather قد سقاني بكأسه الأوفى شربة he has come to me and he has given me the goblet of kawthar and he is telling me to tell you al-ajal al-ajal فَإِنَّ لَكَ كَأْسًا مَذْخُورًا and he is telling you also Hussein hasten to come and join us Imam Hussein a.s. when he hears the sons cry he begins to he breaks down he weeps intensely I would just like to, like to remind you, if Imam Hussein is the warith of Al Imran and the warith of Ya'qub, do you know what happened to Ya'qub? Ya'qub, when he was brought the shirt which was stained by the blood of presumably the blood of Yusuf it was not actually the blood of Yusuf, it was the blood of the wolf. When it was brought to Ya'qub, Ya'qub faints in weeping. When he sees the bloody shirt, imagine the status of this warith of Ali Imran. Now he sees the shirt, in fact the body of his beloved son, his beloved Yusuf, on the plains of Karbala, chopped up. وَقَالَ قَتَلَ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا قَتَلُوكَ May Allah kill those people who have killed you. مَا أَجْرَأَهُمْ عَلَى الرَّحْمَانُ وَعَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَى انْتِهَاكِ حُرْمَةِ الرَّسُولِ how dare, how daring, how audacious, how dastardly, how lowly could they be that you, the flesh and blood of the Prophet, they have disrespected, they have attacked, they have killed. dunya my son. On this world, woe be to this world. The reporter of the camp of Umar al-Sa'ad, Humayn bin Muslim, says, I, w I was watching this scenario from a distance, and then I saw a lady come out, come forth from the camp of Hussein, and she started crying out loud, Ya Habiba, Ya Thamarat Fuada, Ya Nura Aina, oh, oh, my beloved son, oh my, apple of my eyes, all the fruit of my heart. And she was crying loudly and I asked the people around, who is this lady? And they told me, here Zainab bin <laughs> Ta'ali. She came, she came till the body of Ali Akbar. Ali Akbar, remember, is the warith of Imam Hussein, who is the warith of Ibrahim. You know, there's one lady who saw what happened to Ismail when he was about to be slaughtered. The Hajar, we are told, when Ismail came back and he had marks on his neck of the rope and he had marks on his neck of a potential knife cut, when she saw that, she fainted. What do you think Zainab did when she saw the body of Ali Akbar? Her Ismail, her warith of Ibrahim, her warith of Hussein alayhi salam. Imam alayhi salam gently takes her back to the camp. Imam Hussein has no strength now. Imam alayhi salam calls the youth, because all the Bani Hashim are still alive. He calls all the youth, please come over and collect the body and collectively bring it back to the camp. As-salamu ala Hussein. Or ala Ali ibn al-Hussein. وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى الصحابة الحسين